Well, thank you for joining us on today's Conversations on Leadership. I am your host, Dr. Gilles Lamarche. And as we always do, I'm going to start with a quote that I believe is applicable to our guest today for the type of leadership that he's actually offered the world already. And the quote is from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it is, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. And I think you'll all agree that our guest today is a man that has already done that in many aspects of his life. He is widely known as an American inspirational and motivational speaker, trainer, author, serial entrepreneur, member of multiple boards of directors. He is also the co-creator of the Chicken Soup for the Soul Enterprise Company, the books that have sold over 560 million around the world. And to me, more importantly, he has been a mentor. He was my first ever speaker coach that encouraged me to move out into the world and to share my story. He was the first person I ever wrote a book with, and he has been a dear friend for some three decades. So please welcome Mark Victor Hansen, who's joining us today from Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. And uh, like Dr. Jill said, he and I have been uh, great friends basically a long time. <laughs> a long time. A long time, that's for sure. So let's get right to it, Mark, because I know that you know our listeners want to understand how to become better leaders. You've certainly done a great job at leading your life, and you've led hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people mm-hmm. to a better life themselves. So from a perspective of servant leadership, how do you explore and take into consideration how the work that you do helps others, lifts them up if they're least privileged? And how do you ensure that people aren't harmed, but that they really step into the best of who they are? How do you do that? Wow, there, I got to unfold the picture just a little bit. You know, at the level of our stories, we wanted heart-touching, soul-penetrating stories. At the level of leadership, I, I believe that every one of us watching here has got to become a visionary leader and seeing the new picture of who they are. And to do that, fortuitously, Crystal and I had written a little book, which you all are getting a copy of somewhere down the line, called Ask, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. And, and what it's saying is that, look, all of us have a great destiny. And what it is in times like this that are perilous, that are confusing, that are chaotic, what we got to do is go inside our inner being and see what is that high exalted spirit? What is it that you could do if you flat out did what your destiny was to do? And what we're saying in Ask is, you know, three things. Ask yourself, ask others, and ask God. And and for those of you in leadership, and that's everybody on this call, you got to go inside your, like I said, your higher self. And in your higher self, what you got to do, in, in, you know, for me, it's that quiet time. Crystal and I pray together every day. And, and before we go to sleep, we learn that that's what keeps a great marriage together is, and, and ours is spectacular, is that you say, what God, what is your destiny for me? What is that front end path that I'm supposed to do? And the reason I love chiropractic so much is that, you know, we do top down, inside out, and we understand that there's a destiny. And the destiny is to be a great healer. And, 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 you know, whether you're using, you know, your hands or an activated gun or whatever. But the point is, there's more need for leadership today, this minute, this second than ever before. And, and I can tell you the Jill and I have talked about, you know, our chiropractor, Dr. Todd Forbes, who is just a superstar and, and a thinker and it's calming the queer fears of a lot of people because they're freaked out and they're getting subluxated and they're saying, well, oh, and, and what happens is each and every one of us need to, to do exactly what Kipling said. Keep your mind about you whilst all others are losing theirs. I may be over answering your question if I am. No, <laughs> so it's a, no I actually love where you're taking the answer and, to that question. because yeah, So, so I, obviously I'm in the book business, but it, I also have the most relationship capital in the world. And, and so does every one of you can, you can build your own database. And, and at the moment, you know, people are coming to me with ideas that are going to solve and get us out of this. I'll just do the one this morning. Is it a, a lovely guy that uh, Alon Stevie runs go where and I'm on that board and, and they have in Israel and, and he's in Irvine. Uh, they've figured out how to, um, solve the problem of who's got it and where it is and go through the phone system. And it's amazing. And 
we're going through all the channels right this exact second as, as we talked, they're doing it through New York and, and through the White House. And it just, it is amazing that we're going to solve this. We're going to solve it with AI. We're going to solve it with great thinking. We're going, going to go into the greatest times ever. And, and we're going to get over this bump because, you know, what happens is that there's a, we all know the yin and the yang sign. It has a little S in it. And it, crisis always only equals opportunity. So if we've got the biggest crisis in the world, we've got the biggest opportunity in the world. And instead of being downhearted, despondent, disconsolate, and uptight, I'm asking you to bring out those inner qualities of leadership because there's no hero without a problem. And every problem has a solution that we have the, the talent, and you all have infinitely more talent than you've been using. And I'm asking you to wake up that talent by saying, what is your you know, destiny. Number two is the, the technology, and you've got some technology that no one else has, the, uh, the healing arts. And number three, you know, some treasure, and there's going to be more treasure unleashed here in a short time than ever before. And if you look at it in a decade, we're going to have 50 trillion, not billion, trillion dollars made just in America during this decade because of AI, because of 5G, because one of the companies I'm part of, we're turning trash to cash. Uh, we're also going to, I'm going to help all of you, if we get to talk about it at the end, I don't know how long we've got, Jill, you'll have to tell me, but um, I want to talk to you about a new opportunity of writing books with me. So, because we need to get people thinking and writing makes you think, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely agree with you. And I think that the statement that you made that is really poignant for me is that never in history has leadership been more important. We need more people to step into leadership roles not less people, and to lead, obviously, with positive intent and compassion. And I know one of your favorite words, certainly in a lot of interactions you and I have had to get together, is to lead with integrity. Exactly. And, and the, the deal is, is a lot of you are going to be forced into leadership. And I get goosebumps telling you that, and forgive me if I'm astounding any of you, but we've got two leaders in Britain today we got Boris, who's got it, and he's in lockdown, so he can't run his own country. And we got you know, the second in command in, in the uh, kingdom, uh, Charles, that suddenly has it, and he's in lockdown. And by the way, we got a lot of senators in lockdown. Whether you like them or not, that's not the issue. The issue is that somebody's going to have to replace them. Somebody's going to have to step up to the fore. Somebody's going to have to stay healthy. And you and I have a, a sublime role that we got to be healers that heal. And But first of all, we've got to make sure that we are taking sublime care of ourselves and, and making sure you're in excellent health and making sure even though you're working 15, 18 hours a day, or uh, assuming you are still doing that, you know, that you take care of your own health and exercise and make sure your nutrition is better than it's ever been and make sure you're thinking positively rather than negatively. Do not over inundate yourself with all the negative news fit to spew forth. I went bankrupt 1974 because I read the New York Times, which is all the news fit to print. No, it's all the bad news fit to print. And so I, I got to say, you've got to have a hiatus or a limit on how much you're willing to implode on, on negative news. Or uh, I'm going to do something else. I hope this is not too spiritual for all of you. Put a spiritual shield. Ask Archangel Michael to guard you so all that negativity doesn't permeate, penetrate, and fill the inner spaces of your being. You know, one thing I learned from you probably 30 years ago was to make the conscious choice to surround myself with white light. Exactly and correct. You, you used to teach that from the stage. Uh, I took that on. It has been actually a phenomenal way to sort of lead my, lead my own life. Um, moving into on the leadership questions, you know, what is one characteristic that you believe every leader must possess? They've got to be crystal clear what they want. And once you figure out what you want, my position is you've got to put it in writing. And it's got to be written. What is it that you want to do? And then nowadays, you know, in the old days, I'd say you ought to have a journal and carry it with you. Today, we all have a cell phone and you ought to have your main goals of how many patients you want to see, what you want to do, how you want to grow in your practice, no matter what. And it's got to be on your cell phone because the average business guy or lady looks at their cell phone now 60 to 160 times a day. Therefore, you're going to be looking, if that's your screensaver, you're going to look at your goals exactly what you want to do. In my case, you know, what I want to do is, is because our book comes out April 28th and we got to pre-sell it, and you can just go to Amazon and get a copy if you want. And obviously, Jill has given a lot of these to you, but is it screensavers? I've got to sell, according to our publisher, 20,000 copies 
by April 28th. Well, to do that, we're doing four podcasts a day. We're doing meetings like this. So I'm taking, it, it is under my control. And then I'll just go one step further. One of our clients who I think I introduced you to a long time ago uh, is a guy named Harry Singer. He has uh, 7,000 employees, so he's big, but he owns Ultra Soap. And his soap business went down. And then all of a sudden he said, wait a second, I'll do survival soap. And he does antibacterial soap. He's packing it. It's selling like crazy. Then there's no alcohol at the hospitals for the first time are washing their hands enough. You know, and they've used up all the soaps that they came to him. And he said, we need alcohol. So he started making alcohol outside his 70,000 square foot building. And then he built an explosion center inside so he could make alcohol. So he put the package together. So I said, Harry, um, what I'll do is I'll write up an article and we'll insert it in your uh, packaging. And our sales are starting to go up. Our publisher called us at night and said, what are you guys doing? I said, we're inserting it in a survival kit with antibacterial soap from Ultra Soap. And, and it's going like crazy. And, and what I'm saying is that each and every one of us has got to take a new level of leadership where you ASK to GET the business. I can't tell you where it's going to come, how it's going to come, but we're going to start releasing people region by region, most importantly because of this company we got GoWare, which is going to go into the phone. It's going to say who's got it, where they got it, how close you were to it. It can go back 14 days. So America is going to open up again. It's going to open up fairly quickly because in Israel, we've already done it with uh, 600,000 people and Israel's back to work. Netherlands is back to work. Uh, again, moving on leadership, you know, what's one mistake that you have witnessed some of your friends, some leaders that you know, what's the one mistake that they make more frequently than any other? I got a couple of them. I got seven of them. We put it, put it in the book as roadblocks. But the first one is fear, which is the cliche is, of course, false evidence appearing as real. And we start to say, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I can't do this. I, I've never done it before. But, you know, when I started the speaking business um, now 44 years ago, uh, a guy told me how to do it because I asked a guy named Chip Collins. And, and I didn't know I started a life insurance business. And it was four years later that I found out about chiropractic. But I didn't know until I was 28, but uh, or three, a couple of years later, is it, you know, the point is I didn't know any, uh, own any life insurance. I didn't know what a premium was. I didn't know a CLU meant, it means chartered life underwriter, but cunning, lonely, and unhappy. I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know a, a doctor of chiropractic, DC was doctor of cause. I didn't know that, but I courageously went forth, learned the stuff. Everything is a system. So once you decide that it's a system and there's an inside, my teacher, Buckminster Fuller, would say, and an outside, you decide that you're going to know the inside. And today we can learn that exquisitely fast, thanks to the internet, having untold amounts of information. I mean, so all of us have uh, a whole encyclopedia available in our cell phone or in our computer or pad. So much information everywhere, for sure. And so maybe the, the last question that I'm going to ask you, and then you could you know, tell us a little bit about uh, the book that you and Chris are launching at the end of April. What are the few resources that you would recommend to someone if they were looking to gain insight into becoming a better leader? Because that's really the audience that we have, is those looking to be the leaders that they are, to expand their leadership, and to become a better leader. So what are some of the resources that you would suggest that people look into so they could become a better leader? Okay, so every leader has to be a master communicator, and they've got to make sure that they are doing what old Zig Ziglar used to say, a checkup from the neck up. And the way I did that, when I went bankrupt, luckily I had sold my way through college. I listened to one tape, audio tape, 287 times. Today, you can do it on podcasts. You can do podcasts on my stuff. You can do podcasts on, on, on your stuff. We can do lots of stuff, but there's really good stuff out there right now from Singularity University, which Dr. Peter DeMandis is saying the future is bigger, brighter, and faster than ever before. You've got stuff that you need, you need to be inputting at a higher, better, stronger level. So in my case, when I'm exercising, when, when I'm either exercising climbing the mountains here in Scottsdale, Arizona at McDowell Mountain or Camelback, or when I'm spinning, because I spin when the gym was open uh, three days a week, you know, and I, I listen to the podcast. So, because if you keep your mind positive, you're going to get hit with stuff, but you'll be immune to it. You'll, the white light that he talked about, you'll, it'll bounce off you. If you watch too much news and inundate yourself, you'll crush yourself. You'll be full of fear and doubt. You'll say, oh, my God, the economy's going to hell. Because the news media only sells when it sells negative mood, news. It doesn't make positive news. And I'm talking about Rupert Murdoch. I'm talking about the head of CNN, 
crisis news network. I don't care what you watch or too many newspapers. So you've got to make sure you inundate and implode yourself with positivity. And obviously, you can go online and get everything at YouTube on, on my stuff. There's a ton of really good people out there that have great, uplifting, exalted stuff. My stuff, Bob Proctor's stuff, Rita Davenport stuff. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, once you go online or any other guy you want who's your neighbor there is is Jeff Hoffman, the guy who did Priceline, who's, you know, created it so we can make stuff happen. So there's a lot of good stuff. And, and the point is that if you look in his bookshelves, 50,000 books, but a lot of them are on the greatest speeches ever. Well, the greatest speeches, the people became heroes because Winston Churchill had the courage when he knew that he was going to get crushed by Germany to say, Winnie, we're made for times like this, and we're going to meet him on the beaches. And he went through these great speeches. Each and every one of us is going to have, start practicing your great, inspiring, profound speech that's going to deliver us out of the quagmire into the exalted bright light of the future, which is going to be bigger, better, more opportunistic, more promotion, if you'll be that leader that leads and be courageous when others are fearful. And I love that, you know, because it, it brought back a memory of uh, the first time I went to one of your speaking courses, how to speak for fun and profit. Yeah. Right? And that was a powerful shift for me because, you know, until then I was a relatively shy person and you convinced me that the only way that I could really burst out of the, the typical bubble that most people are in and really build a great life was to become a great communicator. So thank you for sharing that. And I will be uh, really, really honored and proud to to host you and Crystal at Life University in the fall, as well as at the Cobb Library Foundation uh, Gala, where we raise funds for literacy. And I know that you're going to be bringing some of your books. I know we pre-purchased some of your new books. So why don't you, uh, you. close out, if you would, by telling us uh, what you're up to and tell us a little bit about your new book, Ask. Well, two things. One is that I'm thankful for all that. We look forward to it. We're eager to be there. America is going to be back and operative, I believe, by then. I want to talk about two books. One is called Ask, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. The book business is coming back, which is amazing to me, because people are at home and they're reading and they're ordering everything on Amazon.com, which you can do it. And if you'll send me a receipt, just go to reception at markvictoransen.com. We want to send you some of my electronic goodies to keep you positive as a leader, and, and I'd love you to share it with your family. Then there's a second book that I want you to think of because we may be locked down. If we're going to be locked down till Easter, I'm going to ask you to write your own book. And if you go to reception at markvictoranson.com, I've done another book called You Have a Book in You. And I think everybody needs to have a book, just like I've asked you to do and you've done. Is It, is it, it gives you mega credibility, even if the people don't read it when you give it away. And But it helps you decide who you're going to be. And if we're going to have more downtime, what better use than to figure out what you're the master maestro of that, that is your destiny and then write from it. So if you go to reception at we can send you the information on that. And we're going to do online seminars to teach people how to write their book fast. We're going to help you. If you want to just write your autobiography, which I think is like way cool idea. We even wrote a book called Speed Write Your Life Story, Your Autobiography, because everyone has one. And wouldn't you love to know what your great great grandfather thought, felt, believed, you know, four or five generations ago. And you started this with one of my heroes, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Now it turns out that my teacher, Dr. Buckminster Fuller's great 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 grandfather, who started the Divinity School at Harvard, was Dr. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Did you know that? I did not know that. I didn't know there was a relationship between Buckminster Ralph got, and Ralph. Ralph got his whole family to write down what their life vision was. And so Bucky used to tell me, he was affectionately called Bucky. I'm not besmirching. I spent seven years traveling around the world with Dr. Fuller, the guy who invented GDS domes, wrote 40 books, 15 doctorates at Harvard. Amazing guy, growing needles, uh, Dymaxian cars that ran in alkyl ethyl. So Bucky was the reigning best student of his teacher, Einstein. Anyhow, um, what, what happens is that Bucky said, I read all the diaries and all the family journals all the way back to Ralph. And I just went, oh, my gosh, someday I'd like to do that. Now I've written a book that I want you guys to know about, and ladies to know about. I don't, I'm not being chauvinistic here at all. I just, my mind is going so fast because I really, if, if I could be a gadfly, if I could poke the spirit alive in you to start writing, what is your bigger, better, grander future? 
when the game's done, when you're whatever age you're going to be, and my goal is to live to be 127 with options for renewal, and you're looking back, what is it that you wanted? What were the conquests? That, what did you want to conquer? Where did you want to go? What did you want to see? How many people did you want to help? How many patients? How many new doctors did you want to inspire to create? Those are the kind of goals I'm asking you to write because it, is, it isn't good enough just that you see however many patients you see and whatever it is, I'm a high volume guy because I think the more you see, the better you're going to do. Just like I've written 308 bestsellers, which people go, do you ever play? I, listen, I've climbed all the highest mountains. I've climbed Machu Picchu, Fuji, I, you know, Kilimanjaro in, in America, Whitney. So, I, you know, and Crystal and I have been to 80 countries having a glorious time and, and talked to 7 million people live. You and I have a bigger, brighter, better, more exalted future than you can even imagine but you've got to put it in writing, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I'd like to be part of that inspiration. I'm so thankful that my friend, Dr. LaMarche, has brought me to share with you. And I hope this has been inspirational at the core of your beingness, because there's more in you. That's where, I, and number one, there's more in you. And then number two, just be so you got it, is that there's always a solution. Now, it may not be obvious, but the minute you start asking yourself questions, what my wife and I have discovered in the research at Harvard says is that it illuminates brain cells that you didn't know. So I'm asking you to be your highest, biggest, best, most extraordinary self, not just for you, but back to where Jill started, is that we're here in Atlanta, Martin Luther King, and I got to do the Martin Luther King Day one day, it said all of us can be great because we can serve greatly. And the, and the master teacher said, when a disciple said, how do you become great? How do you become a great leader? He said, the greatest amongst you is servant of all. So I'm asking you to figure out how to master service because there's always a quantity and quality of service with a positive mental attitude that will give you unlimited compensation, make you feel really good about yourself. Your self-esteem will rise, your self-confidence will rise, and you'll be a better, more inspiring, great leader than you've ever even imagined. Mark, you are a true blessing to humanity, and certainly uh, today you have been a fantastic blessing to our listeners. You've uh, brought all sorts of points as it relates to improving leadership skills, but most importantly, I would say you are an inspiration. You're an inspiration to who people can continue to be by thank discovering you. what's inside of them. So thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule. To, to share with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it on today's Conversations on Leadership from our guest, Mark Victor Hansen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.